In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Surface Effector 2D. So I'm going to head, grab this platform, which just is a bunch of sprites with a empty around it, which has a box collider. So I'm going to go ahead, shrink that up, and we'll go ahead and add that Surface Effector 2D. And then just like the other effectors, we got to go ahead and select Used by Effector in the Collider. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of the properties here. So we'll come back to the Collider one. And let's take a look at the Force. A positive speed for the Force will make it move on the positive X axis. Now this is the local axis, where if you add a negative, it'll move to the left. Speed variation. Just add some variation to the speed. So if we had one here and we added another 10 for the variation, we're now getting speeds anywhere from one to 11. And of course you can add a negative number here, which you just subtract for it. So you have the possibility of going backwards. And then the force scale. Think of this as how fast your object is going to gain speed up to the maximum speed. So by setting this to one, which would be 100%, which would mean that it would go up to whatever you have for your max speed or your, your speed in general. It'll, as soon as it touches, it gets that speed right away. You generally don't want that. So let's go ahead and take a look at these in play. I've gone ahead, taken my crate, and it's the exact same crate we've been using all along. It has a box collider and a rigid body. I haven't touched anything in either one of them. So let's go ahead, we'll drop it and watch it go. So it's going, it's bouncing, and that's because of the effector. Uh, let me go ahead and let's just turn bounciness off just for a second here. Actually, do I have it on the crate as well? I do not, okay. I'm gonna turn off the friction and the bounciness, and we'll cover this in just a second. It's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll just take a look. So now it doesn't bounce, and because we have it set to one, it just goes at a speed of one. And when it gets to the end, it's just gonna fall off. Let's go ahead, we'll stop it. Let's do 10, just to show the change. Much quicker. And of course, you could also do a random, which of course, probably, we'll probably end up getting 11 or something. And just to demonstrate backwards. Let's do negative 10. Away it goes. And well, let's not do 10, 10's a little too quick. Let's just do five for now and let's come down to the options. The first one is use force contact. If you have this applied or ticked on, when it hits, wherever it hits on that collider, it's gonna apply a force to it, which is gonna rotate the object. So let's take a look. There we go. So as the force was going, it was rotating the object. We'll go ahead, take a look at the next one. The next one is using friction. We'll use the, whatever the friction settings are between the two objects. Uh, we're both using the default. Oh, so we're actually using a demo material here on this collider, which has a friction of zero and a bounciness of one. That's why it was bouncing earlier, ha ha. So these are the default settings. We could just go ahead and take it off as well. Either one will work. So we'll go ahead, use the friction, and the friction is gonna slow it down now. So let's increase the friction a bit on this. Let's try one. Will one be enough to really slow it down? Might need to go a little higher. It is a little slower, and you notice because of the friction, the force that's still being applied to it causes it to roll. Even though we don't have the contact force on. So let's try just a little bit more on that friction. Uh, let's try a three. That should really get some rolling going on. There we go. And there's probably a game mechanic in that. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea, right? And of course, if we go ahead and switch on some bounciness, it's gonna go flying now. If we come back in, and enable bounciness. There we go. Going. And we probably shouldn't have really done that much. It's gonna take forever to come down. Let's drop it down just a bit. 
Uh, let's just stick to one. Keep the forces the same. There we go. And I actually want to turn on the contact point as well. So we can get some spinning at the same time. Now, of course, you're going to want to season this to taste. Let it go. <laughs> so basically, it's a conveyor belt. And of course, you can season the, the values to taste to fit your game, but that's how you actually use the Surface Effector 2D. So the last thing we have to look at is the Collider Mask. Now, this works the same as all the other Effector 2Ds. Uh, by default, it comes ticked, and we have everything selected. If we go ahead and unselect it, it's still going to grab everything that's on that layer mask. And let me take a look. It's default for the box, which it is. So if we go ahead and play it, it's going to be the exact same as it was before. It affects everything. But let's go ahead and turn something off. We go ahead, tell it to go and use the collider masks. And instead of everything, I'm going to select nothing. And then we'll, we'll demonstrate the default, which again, since this is the layer that it's on, it's going to affect it the exact same as it always has. But if we tell it to select everything but default, or just something that doesn't include default, there we go. It doesn't affect it at all. It'll just go right through. So up to you exactly how you want to work with it. Uh, I'm going to select everything but default. There we go. And if we start, it falls through. And of course, my character does not. My character, whoops, my character is still affected by it. Now we have force applied to our character a different way, so this conveyor belt does not work with us. But that's how you work with the collider masks. Anyway, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>